Good morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As people are coming in, come on in. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are here once again to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We are here. To God be the glory. We are here to worship the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. As we come together this morning to fellowship and worship the Lord, let us tune our hearts and our minds to his presence. He's here. And we expect the unusual today. We expect every day. Our eyes are open. We expect the best. We expect him to get the glory. Hallelujah. Our expectations matter. We choose to believe God for the good. Let's rejoice about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is good. Why is he good? Because you are here. You are present. You can hear. You can see. You can clap your hand and worship and praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for as we enter your gates with thanksgiving. We praise you, we magnify, we glorify you, Lord. We praise you for every person that's here this morning. We thank you for every need that's before us that you have already gone before to prepare the way. Lord, we thank you for the faith that you're building in each of us, Lord. We know we can't please you without faith. So, Father, we honor you, we trust you, we praise you for your faithfulness. So get the glory today out of this service, this worship, Lord God. We praise you for the miracles that you're working right now that you've already prepared for each of us. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for the victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Come on, Antioch. Can you go ahead and stand to your feet? Let's welcome the king in the room. Before we sing any song, can we just do just like she said? Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Come on, can we just say thank you, Jesus? You've allowed us to make it into this room another time. And it's only because of your grace and your mercy that we have breath in our lungs today. So even before we sing a song that's been written, may we sing the song that's on our hearts that just says thank you. We give you glory. You are worthy. We honor you. You are worthy. Just pour it out from your heart. Whatever is on your heart, would you just pour it out to Jesus? We've come, oh Lord, because your presence is here. We've come to this place because you are here. And so we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Oh, have your way. We love you. We need you. We're here for you. Only you. Only you, Jesus. Oh, pour out your spirit as we worship you. Inhabit the praises of your people. Oh, we love you. We sing. Can you just give Jesus a big shout of praise all across the room as we welcome his presence in here? Here we go. Come on, clap those hands. Shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours now forevermore. Hear our worship. All we can give is for you. Come on, say, we're here for you. Come on, let's set our intentions today. For you, Jesus. Oh, for you. Yeah. Here we go. So we dance. We dance. That's it. And we sing. Oh. We sing. Come on, break free in this room. We worship, we worship. you, you are king. I said, see, we're here for you. And we give, we give. oh, we give you everything. everything. Yeah. I said, to the one who is worthy. Come on, let's say, we're here for, we're you. Here for ha. you. Come on, would you clap your hands, all you people? We are here for you, Jesus. We know that things change when you come. So we've decided that we're going to stay right here with you. Say, if you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. You say, if you don't come, here we go. We won't oh, move. we are desperate. desperate. Lord, for a touch Can you just from cry out you. that in this room? We won't move. We are. Come on, into your say, You don't come. We won't move. We are desperate. Yes, Lord. We are glory. We won't move. We are. I said, You 
you don't come, you don't come we won't move. We won't We're move. desperate. Desperate love for a you don't come, you don't we won't move. We, won't we are. Desperate yeah. love for a touch from we'll you. Your head. Come on, clap your hands in this room. Oh, Jesus, we welcome you. Yeah. Touch from you, Jesus. A touch from you. Come on, would you shout that out to him? Oh God, say it. We need a touch. Take it out. Touch from oh. you. Come on, Antioch. If you know that only when Jesus comes, things change. The atmosphere begins to shift. Everything that you need is brought in when he comes because we know who it is. Oh, he is Jesus. He's the way maker. We know Jesus. Oh, he's the chain breaker. Lift your voice. Jesus. Come on, would you shout his name? Say way maker. Way maker. Oh, you are. Jesus. Hey, he's a chain breaker. Chain breaker. Can I get you to break real fast? So, listen, if there's somebody in this room that has a need, can you just make a noise to it in this room? Can you just lift your voice if you have a need? Is there anybody in this room that has a need that needs Jesus? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to sing the name of Jesus. And I want you to know in your heart that when we sing the name of Jesus, he begins to move on our behalf. He begins to move and he begins to do everything that he's promised. And so in this moment when you lift up Jesus, I want you to just do it with all faith that you have. Every bit of faith that you have in the God that we serve, knowing that as you worship, he's going to be taking care of you and the things that are concerning your heart. Are you ready? So let's do it again. Here we go. We shout. Jesus, you are way maker. We say, Jesus, you are the chain breaker. You got to use it. Come on, all in this room, we know you way maker. Way maker. Yeah, say Jesus. Jesus. Lift it, he's the chain breaker. Power in the name of him. There's power to save, heal, deliver, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, sing it. He's the chain breaker. Whatever you need, it's in Jesus. He's the way. Sing 
there's anybody else in this room that has a testimony of the goodness and the faithfulness of Jesus. Let's sing it together. 
bless you. We've entered this place with thanksgiving. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so have your way. Have your way as we praise you. Come on, I need the real warriors in this room to just start praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just start interceding. That the Holy Spirit will pour out His Holy Spirit all across this room. And that no one will leave the same way that they walked foot in here. Oh, Jesus. Pour out your spirit. And have your way. Have your way. Have your way. You to lift your hands. Let's welcome him in. Oh, Jesus, we welcome you right now. Oh, oh, oh. We welcome you right now. Oh, oh, oh. I know we have a four member. Can we just welcome him? We welcome you right now. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. We welcome you right now. Let's get on one accord. Let's sing this chord one time.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah in his presence. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. As we enter into this communion time, if you don't have your sacraments, you raise your hand. You will be served. Hallelujah. As we prepare our hearts, you may have your seat. Let's, have, let's prepare our hearts for the time of communion. We give praise for this special, special time. And this is a time where if you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, this is where we recognize and we appreciate and we honor our Jesus Lord who paid the sacrifice and the price for each of us to have salvation. So at this time, if you have your sacraments, we just want to think about it in the moment. Search your heart, search your mind, relax, breathe, and ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of anything that you need to repent of at this moment, that you need to release, that you need to forgive, that you need to let go of, whatever it is, give it to him and allow him to heal and make you new as we continue to move forward in our faith. It's all about faith, right? He's called us as believers of faith. Hallelujah. So as we move into this, we're going to pray and we're going to take from the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we praise you for this time, Lord God, that we come before you to worship you, Lord God, on this special day, Lord God, that you've given us to renew our minds, to renew our hearts, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice that you, that you paid, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, Father. We love you, Lord. We rejoice, Father. We praise you. We're thankful for your faithfulness. So, Holy Spirit, have your way today, Lord God, as we, Lord God, remember the sacrifice that you paid for each of us. We love you and we praise you for all these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. On that day when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. After taking the bread, he gave thanks. And he broke it. And he said, do this in remembrance of me as often as you do it, and partake. Let's eat together. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and he said, this is my new covenant established by my blood. And as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for this newness of life, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the sacrifice, Lord. We praise you for the newness of life, Lord. We thank you that our faith is increasing in you every day. We trust you. We love you. We thank you, Father, for your power and your majesty and your glory. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. This is a house. 
life in faith. Worship in advance. Before you see anything, oh, just tell them, I believe you're going to do it. You're the miracle working by. stop you never stop work hey you never stop you never stop work come on can you say even when i don't see come on encourage yourself say even when i don't feel it you never stop you never stop you never stop come on sing that in this room i believe even when i don't see it when i can't see him you're it. even when i don't feel it i know it you never stop never stop you never stop you never, never stop. stop. That's it. Stop. Even when I don't see you when I can't see in your word. Yeah. Even when I can't feel it. Say, you never stop. 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 Oh, you never stop. You never stop. You never stop. No. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. Oh, because you love us. You never stop. Come on, if you believe that, just, just lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and give God a shout of praise. Or either a cry for help, but open up your mouth and give God something. Either it's a shout of praise or a cry for help. Is anybody in need of a miracle? Is anybody in need of a miracle? Do you believe that God still does miracles? I wish I could come and grab every one of you, look you in your eyes and shake you and tell you God is not finished. I don't care where you are, what you're going through, how dire it's been, how long you've been waiting on it. For some of you in this place, as the Bible says, hope deferred has made your heart sick. But I want to grab you if I could. I'll grab you by both shoulders, look you squarely in the eye and tell you God's not finished yet. He's a God no matter the circumstance no matter the opposition or deficit that is still working miracles if, he, if he's ever worked a miracle for you if you would be extensions of the divine hands of God I can't reach your neighbor but grab your neighbor real quick if they look a little scared just just look at them in their eyes turn them around make them look at you yeah tell them God is still working miracles in fact put a finger in their face tell them I don't care what you're going through I don't care who's against you. I don't care what weapon has been formed. God is still doing miracles. He's still healing bodies. He's still giving divine provision. He's still protecting. He's still covering. He's still pulling your children back home. He's still filling with his spirit. He's still raising people up in a generation where they said the church is dead. No, God is alive. And if he's alive, tell somebody he's still doing miracles. And if they won't praise him with you, tell him, God, I'll praise you myself. Would you make me a miracle? Would you make me a testimony? Come on, sing it like you believe it. 
God is working. And if God is working, ain't no need. Forgive the English. And, and, and both of us working. <laughs> Tell somebody, let him work, let him work, let him work. Sometimes you have to give room for the Lord. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what my English is happening with my English today. T tell somebody, tell somebody. I ain't arguing no more. When I'm quiet, then that's when you better watch out. Because I'm leaving the room for God to deal with it. In fact, next argument, I'm not even going to have it. I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm just... What's happening? That's our declaration for this week. Come on. I'm not crazy. I'm marinating your spirit in the declaration. Sometimes you just rush on. But I'm just marinating your spirit. If you get nothing else from today, doesn't always feel good, but God, tears in my eyes, but I know. I did see those bills, but. I heard what the doctor said, but I declare, God. I know the vision you gave me, it seems like it's falling apart before it comes together, but here's what my declaration is. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So Father, this is a declaration of our hearts. Some of us say this by faith. Some of us declare what we have seen. For many in this place, for some in this place, it is a testimony of your recent goodness. But wherever our voices are lifted and the meditations of our heart turn, turn towards you, we simply ask that you receive the gift of our praise. I pray that you surround us, that you marinate us this entire week in this declaration. No matter what it looks like, no matter the obstacle, the challenge, the deficit, we believe by faith that you're on the job and that you, God, are causing all things to work together for the good of them who love you, for the call according to your purpose. We declare that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against us shall be condemned. We still believe that what they meant for evil, Lord, you're turning it around for our good. And ultimately, Lord, it is not for an earthly, horizontal, terrestrial flex. But God, you do this for your glory. That we will be lovingly conformed into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. And for that, we are eternally grateful. And all those who agree with the prayer and believe that God is still on the job. And never stops working. I want you to say amen and turn to about five, ten people around you, touch them, tell them he's working, 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 he's working. Well, y'all, come on, let's praise God for the praise team for this band. Trinity and the praise team is banned and so grateful.
that you're here. Listen, I worked up a sweat. I'm ready to go home now. I'm, but I won't. So good to see you. And um, of time to time, we have. It's so good to see you all the way from Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Kathy, Reverend, Pastor Kathy, Daryl, and Kathy Mitchell. Get, show, show them some love, if you would, Andy. Long-time friends of my grandfather and, um, and, and, and family. Uh, they've been family for years. They were there on Gundry when, when Gundry wasn't even the church yet. When, when we had our kingdom kids was the church. And so it's so grateful to see them in the house today. We're grateful to have them. Um, I don't plan to hold you long. I, I learned not to say I'm not going to hold you long because I... I lied on several occasions and didn't plan to, but I don't plan to hold you long today. I want to, I want to just continue, take a moment to continue what we, we started last week. And if you, uh, your feet are not tired yet, if you would stand just for a moment and give reverence to the reading of God's Word as you meet me in Acts, the book of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter number one, beginning at the fourth verse, Acts. One four. When you get there, say something. If there are any visitors in the house and you don't mind being recognized, if not, don't worry about it. But if you don't mind it, just if you would, throw your hand in the air and wave it like you just don't care. Let us see that you're here. Antioch, if you see a, a hand wave around you, show them some love. Welcome them into the house. Welcome them. Welcome them. Welcome them. See a hand. Welcome them into the house. So grateful that you're here. It's an honor to have you in the house. Day. I want to continue um, with a message that we began last week. I planned to do it the week before, and I have one more in this, this series of messages. Uh, but next week's Father's Day, we're not going to cheat the fathers. I got no amens to that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Got one. We're going to be much better next week. Acts 1, Acts 1, chapter 1. Acts 1, verse number 4. You there? Well, talk to me, y'all. You're not going to look up here at me. Talk to me. Holler back at your boy, please. All right, thank you. What is happening? Is it, are you guys hot? Is it warm? Is that what it is? All along, I thought there was a limitation in the spirit. And y'all, turn on the air, please. All right. Acts 4, chapter 1, verse number 4. It says, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. Say, wait. For what the Father had promised, which he said, you've heard of me, from, from John the Baptist, uh, you've heard of me, he said, you've heard of, from me, for John the Baptist baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. If you read down, skip down to chapter number two, verse number one, it says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. You may be seated. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. I grew up um, in a family, and I've shared this many times, of, of pastors, uh, leaders, ministers, uh, for several generations, as far as I can trace it, back to, to slavery with my grandfather, my mother's side, my grandfather, um, Cicero, that you know he was a bad man with a name like that, Cicero. Chambers, who was the slave that bought his freedom, his wife's freedom, and went on as one of, as I shared with you before, one of the founding pastors of Bishop's College in Texas to train um, African-American pastors who could not go to other institutions. So there was a rich foundation that, that flowed on my mother's side from him to my grandfather, Dr. T.M. Chambers, the most of the leaders or people on her side of the family, it, it was pretty common for them to be steeped in the faith and leaders, pioneers in that space. His son, Dr. Dr. T.M. Chambers Sr., 
is one of the elder statesmen when Dr. King, he wasn't as popular as he is now, was having trouble with other clergymen in the South. He's the one that paved the way to tell the older clergymen to stand down so that this young man's message could be heard. You know the history on the other side. My, my grandfather, Joe Cheney, founded this church, Antioch. He and my grandmother, who's there, 94 years old, wave at us, Granny, wave at us. Every time I ask her how she's doing, she says, I'm, I'm still in the race. And so my, much of my life, there was, there, was a solid, there was a solid biblical foundation. We, we, we were taught well. We didn't adopt anything. We were taught not to adopt anything into our life, our faith practice that there was not a biblical pattern or precedent for. And so for years, there was a solid foundation. And I was saved, I think, re really young, really early, maybe, maybe uh, three, four years old. I really remember understanding the message, and it wasn't long after that before my grandfather <clears throat> baptized me on Gundry. And so, I, I, I confessed Christ. Um, and then, around the chronic era, <laughs> Carl, they're so holy. They're, they're, they're wearing me. They're wearing me today. <laughs> um, around the chronic era, um, I was in high school, Tupac, run with me, Tupac. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the Deco Double G, um, Dre, and um, Second to None, DJ, y'all remember all that, y'all, uh, they've been saved Harmony for too long, they've been saved for way too long. I, I, I drifted a little bit, what, what, you drifted, Terry, you said we're all there? Well, can I get an amen, somebody don't leave the pastor out here by himself, I just, y'all came out of the womb speaking in other tongues, didn't you? And so, and so over, over time, I, uh, you know, I, I drifted a bit in, I wouldn't suggest that I lost, I don't believe that I lost salvation. I do believe that the confession that I made was accurate. The confession I made was real. My belief in Christ was real. The Holy Spirit I possessed, I believe, with all my heart. But interestingly, I, I felt what many of you have felt and it's not just a one-time thing, it happens often over time. And that is, is, I felt like I hit a glass ceiling. I felt like there was more that I wanted to do than I could actually accomplish or pull off. There was a whole lot of stuff as it relates to the move of God or God's kingdom that I was fitting to get ready to do. But, but I could not really walk into that reality. And, I remember some, some, some young guys that were at Poly High with me, they were, they were on fire. I'm talking about on fire. I loved Jesus, but I, was, I loved other things as well, you know. I wasn't as saved, but I mean, they were on fire. They came to the school, to campus with their Bibles in hand. I mean, while we were out there, you know, I was trying to keep my curly top together, you know, and my goatee lined up. I've had this goatee, Carlos, since I was 12. I feel like I'm not Usher, but these are my confessions. They would send me, I'm the one, Brother Daryl, don't tell my father and mother, uh, but I'm the one that they would send if there was a party into the store to get some communion. That's how old I look. In high school, I was the only one that came with a newspaper under my arm and a coffee mug in my hands. A high school. I looked like a grown man. They didn't ask any questions or for ID when I walked in. I told them it's the way you say it. <laughs> you don't ask, can I have that drink? You say, give me that. And when you have a little facial hair in ninth or 10th grade, nobody asks any questions. See how they act when I give my testimony. This is why people don't like the church. And I'm the pastor. This is hard for me. Like, man. It's, it's so, and so... There was these, these, two, these two guys that, that were on fire, and you would know them if I said their names, for those of you around and went to Poly, and, and they would carry their Bibles to school every day, and, you know, every time they saw me, they would, they, would, they, would, they would pray for me. In fact, before they got to me, they would just shake their head a little bit like this, and, you know, hey, Brother Wayne, you know. 
And then invite me to these church meetings and church services. I said, I can't go to your youth night. I'm sorry because your youth night is the same time as the house parties. I cannot go to your youth <laughs> and young adult Bible study. In fact, I have a party I'm throwing myself. I cannot go <laughs> to your youth and young adult Bible study. And, and, and one day they got me cornered. It wasn't them, actually. It was a brokenness that I experienced while doing me. God will let you do you for a while and another message in of itself until he gives you more of what you thought you wanted until you realize all you need is Jesus. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Think about that. It'll come back. It was one of those. It was one of those. And I was to a degree broken. Sometimes we have to wait for brokenness in people. You can't always shove everything down their throat, but God is at work. It is not just your message. It is not just your pressure. It is not just your influence, but please understand it is not you who are at work and asking God to back what you're doing. It is God that is at work in the life of people, and we just are obedient when God says speak, when God says give, when God says hug, when God says don't say a thing. That is how we're to move. Sometimes you have to give people room for the Lord to deal with them. I remember one night I was out in my drop top. Y'all you, remember my, my old 5.0 with that beat? When you come around the corner, you can hear me from three miles away. They don't have beat like that anymore, but, but you would hear me from three miles away. I was out one of those nights, and I'll just say it this way. Um, I got more than I expected. I came home, and it, my mom used to wait up for me when I walked through the door. I came home to chastise me. I walked in that day, and she was asleep, but I've been so beat up that day, I went and woke her up. I said, Mom, <laughs> at 2 a.m., I said, you're not going to believe what happened. My world is crashing. And she looked at me, and she giggled. <laughs> I said, what are you giggling at, Mom? She said, God told me that was going to happen. and went right back to sleep. I was like, he did, what, what, what's next? It began in my life what was... A moment of brokenness and in that moment of brokenness I was receptive to what I wouldn't have been receptive to while I was just doing me and now when I got back to school and those those young guys came up to me with Bibles in their hand and said brother Wayne they called me brother Wayne they said uh, can we talk to you they were waiting for my rejection and this time I said yeah what y'all got to say he said, we can't do it all right now. They began to talk about it a little bit. They talked about to gauge, to give a diagnostic, to see where I was spiritually. They, they began to gauge me a bit to see where, where I was, y'all. And, and as they began to gauge my condition, they, they looked at each other, nodded their head, walked away, and they said, hey, could you meet us after school? I said, sure, I can meet you after school. And after school, we went to hang out. They buttered me up uh, like, you know, manipulative evangelist. <laughs> no, that's God used it. They took me to the donut shop and paid for it. <laughs> I was like, oh, shucks. It was that donut shop is no longer there. It was on, um, if you remember, um, Atlantic and Artesia. Remember that? And that was a risk. They were from the north side. I was from the east side. I was like, that was a risk just going to this donut shop. And I was at this donut shop, and they started talking to me about the this, this baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, and as I was listening to them, again, my background, I have generations of pastors on both sides that, that laid that serious foundation. And as they were talking, I was going through my mental Rolodex. I was, I was scouring the scriptures in my head. And even as they were talking, what they were saying and the way they were saying it, didn't necessarily click to me or plumb with, with what I've been taught to that point on many levels. But as I began to, to, to share just a little bit more with me, to this day, I, I don't view it theologically, and their theology has evolved from that day we sat in the donut shop. But isn't it interesting how even with flawed sometimes theology, and though we know in part and prophesy in part, we only see bits and pieces of the picture, <clears throat> God still breaks in. 
from time to time and move because God decides to move the way God decides to move, even when our delivery or sometimes our theology is even a little messed up. Are you with me? Anybody who tells you they have the market cornered on God and everything they do is accurate, lined up and hits the target, you better run from them because there is always margin of error in our attempt to capture the fullness of all that God is. You don't have the market cornered on God. Your denomination does not have the market cornered on God. The person who taught you does not have the market cornered on God. There is room for evolution, room for improvement, room for us to be wrong. But aren't you so glad that God sometimes, oftentimes, if you think of him in his complete perfection, God still moves even in our wrong are you with me? Not only does God use flawed vessels, those that still wrestle with sin, raise your hand, really be this if you don't. Okay, good, I'll make sure of my place. Not only does he use flawed vessels, but sometimes he will take a jacked up message to get to us what we need as he clarifies over time. I wish I had time to walk through this. I sat at this donut shop. They begin to share with me about this Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. And I was arguing with them, listen, I already have the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't be saved. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. And there's evidence of the Holy Spirit in my life. And there's the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They said, yeah, I hear that. And what they were trying to explain is that there is a baptism in the Holy Spirit that, that, that they were using language. I, that, that they said, you don't. They led me to believe I didn't have it. They were saying, no, 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 no. They, they, they evolved over time. But at that moment in time, I was arguing, no, I, I, I have the Holy Spirit. I, I know I have the Holy Spirit. But what they were saying is, we're talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We argue back and forth. They said, no, you, no, you, no, you, no, you. Said, what about this scripture? What about that scripture? That's not what that scripture means. We went back and forward. And I told them after a while, I'm tired. I don't want to do this no more. I finally just said, God, whatever you want, me to get. I want it. And we all left the donut shop frustrated. I had jelly still on my cheek. <laughs> Wiped my cheek. Went outside the parking lot right there on Artesia and Atlantic. And they said, we're not going to argue anymore, man. Can we just pray for you? They both laid hands on me. They prayed for me at that moment. And to my surprise, without having a solid theological framework at that time for what they were trying to describe, the Holy Spirit not only overshadowed me, but the Holy Spirit filled me. I mean, every fiber of my being. It was not just a belief system, but it was an experiential feeling. And without anybody coaching me saying, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, say Jesus, 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 Jesus real fast and let it roll into something, just with them praying for me out of my innermost being began to, there was a flow, there was a flood, there was a river that came out of my mouth. I began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It was a heavenly language that flowed from me. And as it was flowing from me with every word that was rolling off of my tongue, I did not understand it, but I experienced it. I knew it was that which the prophet Joel spoke of. I knew it was that which Peter preached about. I knew it was that that happened in, in, in Acts chapter number two on the day of Pentecost. And every fiber of my being was filled. It was not just the language. It was not just the tongue, but it was the boldness that came over for me. It was the presence of God in a pr profound way that was restored. It was my faith was lifted. My ear was tuned toward God. And as I was leaving, they told me, stop, stop, stop. Hold on. You can stop it. I said, I can't. Close your mouth. I stopped it. They looked at me and they said, now listen, this is your gift. They said, you can do this as much as you want. And I, I, I tried to wrap it up real quick so I can get back to it because I was embarrassed a little bit. They were looking at me. They were looking like we told them, and I was looking like I was arguing with y'all with all my, my, my robust theological framework and the way this has all been taught to me. I was arguing with y'all, and I was a little embarrassed because I'm experiencing the very thing I was arguing. 
but, but I said goodbye. I couldn't wait to get in my car. I got in my car. How many? And, and I drove all the way in my car as it relates to, to, to uh, on my way home. As I'm driving in my car on my way home, it continued to happen. I went, said hello to, at the time it was with my grandparents, said hello to them. I went in my bedroom and I, I rolled around that bed all night long with it rolling off my tongue. And at that moment, it was not about a language. At that moment, my faith was renewed. I felt, I was filled to the fullness to fullness in that moment. And, and I still tore up a couple clubs after that. But that marked the shift or the trajectory of my life shifting from that point forward. My question to you, in fact, you asked your neighbor, because I'm too far away for them to respond. Ask your neighbor, have you been baptized three times? In fact, uh, y'all y- act bashful. Uh, l- look at them and-, and tell them you need to be baptized three times. Now, before you leave and say there's heresy at Antioch, I submit to you that biblically was always God's will for you to be baptized three times. Somebody said, run the water. Okay, I'll do it. (laughs) But I want to talk to you just for a moment about, for me, though I had the experience, I could not transmit the experience that I had to others because I didn't even realize or necessarily believe or have the foundation that made sense biblically for me to share with others what was just shared with me. And I remember for years the the incongruency in that because there were others that had different experiences than I had. And And I started feeling like I had to muscle people, like, you know, twist arms and lock them in basements and not let them go until what happened for me happened for them. And I said, God, there has to be a way. There there has to be a way to take people with this robust biblical foundation that I have who see this in our students of Scripture in the way that I see it because I I still have convictions concerning that. But but there has to be a way for me to bring this to the context that I serve. This was years ago. And Lord, Lord brought me across this teaching as evolved by others. But but remember, remember Dr. Jack Hayford, he just passed last year. He was always someone who who was able to harness both of those realities really well, and it became a lot more palatable, and he there would be a little adaptation of some of what he introduced, but, but, but others along the way. I, I came across this, this clear picture that's been in the Bible for my entire life, but nobody told me about this. Nobody looked and said, hey, have you been baptized three times? Based on how quiet some of y'all are, I take it that some of y'all haven't heard about being baptized three times. All right, let's look at it. Here we go. Ready? Then we're going to go home. We're going to pray. We're going to go home today. Here it is. The three baptisms. I want you to say this with me. Baptizer. Baptizee. Baptism. Baptism. Got it? You walking with me? Baptizer. Baptizee. Baptizee. Baptism. That's what messed me up. Nobody did that for me. Baptizer. In every baptism, there are three, biblically, that every believer should have. There is the one doing the baptizing. Number two. There is one who is getting the baptism. And then there is something that they are baptized into. If we don't understand this and haven't experienced all this, I will not tell you that you're not on your way to be with the Lord. No, I I believe you're saved. But here's the problem. 
For many of us, we're limited. We've hit a glass ceiling. For some, we've hit a glass ceiling in our worship. That's why we can't go any higher. Some of you, as we were worshiping, in your spirit, there's this, there's this stirring. And I know what it is. I know what it is to have a rich stirring in your heart, but no external corresponding action. I'm not suggesting that they're not introverts and extroverts. I'm not suggesting that it's not a psychological dynamic or a cultural dynamic or a formational dynamic. I'm not arguing any of those things. But I will tell you that there is a limitation without all three of these baptisms in your encounter with God. You become short-circuited. And some of you, even in worship, you, want, you were raging on the inside, bubbling over, but th there was no boldness in your encounter with God. Some of you, we said, lift your hands. And it wasn't because it wasn't your custom. It was that there was a timidity that came over you. When I tell you I experienced what I experienced in that donut parking lot. It didn't happen all overnight, but it not only changed my boldness in my profession of the faith. It, I, I wasn't as fearful of people's faces anymore. It intensified my worship in every way. And please understand, for those who have experienced it already, biblically there is a case to be made, not only for a one-time experience, but to be filled and continually be filled over time. The people that were filled in Acts 2 later, in Acts 4, as they were praying in the house. The disciples were released. They were praising the Lord and praying. And the place where they were standing was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this time they didn't speak in tongues, but they all spoke the word of God boldly. There's a need to be filled and continually filled. But I got to talk to you about these three baptisms. Number one, the three baptisms. It is Number one, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 13th verse. Listen to what it says. It says, here it is. Remember the categories? Real quick. I know this is not a shout, shouting message. We'll shout next week maybe to the fathers. <laughs> Baptize, sir, the one doing the dunking. Baptize, the one getting dunked. And baptism, what they're getting dunked into. Can you hand me, handle me intellectually? <laughs> Here we go. Dunkin'. What are you talking about? Donut shops and Dunkin'. All right, let's go on. <laughs> First Corinthians, 12th chapter, 13th verse. Listen to what it says. Follow me. Now remember the categories. Here we go. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. Follow me. In this passage, all right, I'm going to ask you this class today. Y'all aren't going to look at me all day. I'm going to ask some questions. In this passage, who is the baptizer? Open book test. For we were, by one spirit, by one spirit, were all baptized into. In this passage, follow me, because they can't all be the same. Who is the baptizer? So in this passage, follow me, baptism number one. We as believers, can I, can I give you a blues clue real quick? The middle section never changes. The baptized Z is always the same. It's you and me. The things that change are the baptizer and the baptism. In this passage, it says, for by one spirit, we were all made. For by one spirit, we were baptized For by one spirit. So in this passage, the one doing the baptizing is who? Achan. The Holy Spirit is baptizing. Say it like me, real intellectual. The Holy Spirit's doing the dunking. Follow me. For by one spirit, we were all baptized. Notice this baptism number one. Into what? 
Y'all got a Bible? Y'all, is it on the screen? Anybody got a Bible? Read it. We're all baptized into what? Into what? Into one what? Body. Huh. Uh-huh. The Holy Spirit is the baptizer. What are we getting dunked into? We get dunked into the body. The body of what? Uh huh. The body of Christ. So here it is. This baptism, number one, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into, transports us into, God counts toward, uh, toward us, not our failures, not our flaws, not our mistakes, but your salvation and belief in Christ activates the Holy Spirit to not just, it is not just a belief system. Don't ever let anybody tell you it was just a belief system. No, your belief triggered your experiential divine encounter. You believed on him as Savior, but the, when you did that, when you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart in Christ Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved, it was not just something you repeated. Don't let anybody ever minimize your salvation experience if you truly believed and you truly confessed. At that moment, the Holy Spirit, though you were still here on earth, though you were standing in front of that minister or friend who was ministering to you, in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit took you and put you, placed you, submerged you, baptized you into Jesus Christ, into the body of Christ. So when God looks at you, this is people that think you could lose your salvation today and gain it tomorrow and lose it again and gain it tomorrow. They don't understand the baptisms properly because when he baptizes you into the body. He does not take you out of the body. No. When you confess and believe, that's your first baptism. You are baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. When God sees you, He doesn't see your past. He doesn't see your failures. He doesn't see your mistakes. He doesn't see your shortcomings. But He sees the complete work of Christ that's paid the price for you and you are in Christ. If I'm in Christ, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. I am in Christ. Don't let anybody tell you that was just a cute little prayer you prayed or you didn't really believe. No, if you believe that God did something to change not only your eternal salvation, but your experiential encounter with him here and now. I'm saved. I don't take that lightly. That wasn't some cute little Christian camp. No, I'm saved. God sees me different. Angels and demons see me different. There's a greater authority I walk in. I may not be aware of it, but I am now the righteousness of Christ. It is not my mistakes that God sees me with. It is not my mistakes and I count against myself, but it is, listen to me, the finished work of Christ. Tell somebody I'm in Christ. Yeah. Baptism number one is the baptizer, the Holy Spirit, takes me and places me into the body of Christ. It is an experiential encounter. It is a divine reality. It is not something that you just believe. It is something we are. And that is the mystery of this great and beautiful thing. Though we believe different things from time to time or we express in different ways across the globe, everyone that confessed and believed for real, for real, was baptized ties into the same thing. That's baptism number one. Ask your neighbor, have you been baptized? That's baptism number one. Baptism number two, here we go. Jesus says, if you skip down to Matthew 3.11, listen to what Jesus says. As he's going to be baptized by John the Baptist. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew, you there? 3.11. In fact, let's go back a little higher. Matthew 28.18. Let's go to Matthew 28.18. You there? If not, you're going to have to believe me. Here we go. It says, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. All right, so baptism number one is when the Holy Spirit 
baptizes us into the body of Christ. We're baptized into the body of Christ. Baptism number two, here's what Jesus says. He says, listen to me, go therefore into all the earth. And he says, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the question for you. Who in this passage does the baptizing? Who is the baptizer? Ah, some AP students out there. I see you. In this passage, Jesus, the Messiah, looks at us and says, you go. What, what, what do you want us to do, Lord? You go and you baptize. It's a spiritual mystery as well. But it is in this tangible, in this natural and adorning world. It is a greater picture in the natural of what just happened in the supernatural. Try this. It is, you go, you go and baptize. Notice, the first baptism happens in the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes the believer and dunks them into a spiritual reality, which is the body of Christ. But the second one, he says, now, if you confess and believe, that happens spiritually, but we need to have some corresponding sign in the natural world of spiritual realities, because when there are no natural signs of spiritual realities, the spiritual realities become obscure and people forget about it. So here's what I want to do. I'm not going to take the Holy Spirit now. I'm going to take a physical human to give a physical sign of a spiritual reality so that as they live in this physical body, they will not forget their spiritual state. So he says this. He says, so I'm, I, I need you as believers with physical hands to take people and dip them, baptize them into some second baptism. Watch this. So the baptizer is the believer. The baptizer Z is also the new believer. What is the baptism? The baptism is to take them as a spiritual mystery, but also as a sign of the spiritual reality that they just walked into, to take them physically and put them in physical water representing that they've been buried and identified with Christ in his death burial. But when they come up out of that water in his resurrection. So the second baptism. First baptism is the Holy Spirit baptizing you into the body. Second baptism is the believer baptizing you into water. Let's look at the third baptism. We're going to go home. As Jesus is going to be baptized by John, speaking of this baptism, here's what he says. Matthew, <clears throat> third, third chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. Here's what it says. Let's go home. It says, as for me, I baptize with water for repentance. Say repentance. But he who is coming after me, this is John the Baptist speaking, is mightier than I. Talking about Jesus, right? He says, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Third baptism, here it is. First baptism, the Holy Spirit puts you into the body of Christ. Second baptism, the believer takes you and dunks you in water. Third baptism, Jesus says it here. He says, John says, Jesus, I'm going to baptize him. I come baptized with water. <clears throat> but there's one coming, speaking of Jesus, who is going to baptize with the, into the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, don't have time to argue this. Most translations, Jesus is not, <clears throat> when he comes back to fulfill this on Acts, Acts 2, there's no picture of fire because it should read in its original translation that he will come and baptize with the Holy Spirit, not and fire, but in context, it is the Holy Spirit or fire. 
Because if you continue to read, he said his winnowing fork is at the threshing floor. He will gather up the wheat to himself and bundle it to himself. He says, and the chaff will be gathered up and thrown into unquenchable fire. So here's the idea. There's a separation. He says there is fire, but there's also being baptized in the Holy Spirit. By the time we get to the book of Acts, there is no reference outside the tongues of fire, but there's no reference in the language to them being baptized in fire. They're being baptized, follow me, into the Holy Spirit. So let's do this again. Last one and we're done. Who is the baptizer? Open book. Jesus. He said, John says, one's coming who's mightier, mightier than I, that's Jesus, and when he comes, he is going to baptize you into the Holy Spirit. So this third baptism, who is the baptizer? Jesus. What are we getting baptized into? The Holy Spirit. The baptism is the Holy Spirit. One more scripture and we're done. First Corinthians. You see this pattern continued here, just so you understand it's not a mistake. When I saw this, I said, shoot, I can hold my biblical theology intact, but still celebrate everything that God has for me. And the challenge with so many of us in this place is, for some, we've only had two baptisms. For others, you need to be filled afresh. Here's what he says. 1 Corinthians 10th chapter. Watch the parallel. It says, For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all baptized. All right, let me help you. Biblically speaking, when the children of Israel, they're speaking about when they were in the wilderness, they were led by a cloud by day, and fire by night, that represented the leading of the Holy Spirit. The cloud and the fire represented the Holy Spirit guiding them, leading them on this pathway. So here's the idea. He said, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, but when our fathers were all in the wilderness under the cloud, follow me, and all passed through the sea. That is, when they came out of Egypt, Moses lifted his rod. They walked through the sea. The, Israel, the, the, the Egyptians try to come behind them. They're drowned in the sea. They cross over onto dry land. They all passed through the sea, and they were all, follow me, baptized into Moses and in the cloud and in the sea. Follow me. Moses, if you're taking notes, represented a type of Christ or Messiah in the way that Christ intercedes for us with God to say the price is already paid, be merciful with your people, your judgment as a righteous God will not fall on your people because my love and my sacrifice covered them. If you remember Moses in the Old Testament as he was leading the people of Israel out of Egypt, which represents the world and the world system, through the Red Sea, which represents water baptism, to the promised land, are you with me? He says many times, God, don't kill them. Don't let your wrath fall on them. God, it wasn't that he stopped God, but God was setting up a picture for us of what Christ will ultimately do. No matter where we find ourselves, Christ in his sacrifice, his love, keeps the judgment of God that we deserve from falling on us. Because like Moses was our intercessor, their intercessor in the Old Testament, Christ is our intercessor actually, not only in the New Testament, but forevermore. He stands between us and the judgment of God that we deserve and say, says, as I'm leading them to where you ultimately want them to be. I know they're walking around here in the wilderness wondering, and we're, they're ultimately going to get to where you called them to be. But until they do, until they see you face to face, I've paid the price, so I intercede on their behalf. Would you count what I've done toward them and not what they've done toward them? That's salvation. And so here we get to the end of the Bible. We get to 1 Corinthians. 
And he says, we're all baptized into, they're all baptized into, watch this, into Moses, that's salvation, into the cloud that is spirit, and into the Red Sea, that is water baptism. Three baptisms right there. Look at your neighbor, ask him, have you been baptized three times? Last one. I said that was the last one, but I forgot there was one more. And then we're going to pray. First John 5, 6. Listen to what it says. It says, this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three, say three, that testify. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. In order to be baptized with all three, I first got to believe that there are three. I'm closing for real. No more scripture. But I got in my car on the way over here as I was thinking about how to just drive this home as, I, as we pray. I, I like cars for technology and for ride. I never keep them clean. I abuse cars. But, but, but I, I like, I drive a lot, travel a lot. I like to be comfortable when I do. And the little things I like, I like little tech stuff. And I got my car, <clears throat> get in the car. There, there, is, a, there is a tech display. There, there's display. In, in they, they, I just got the update, so, so it's cute. It's a beautiful display. <clears throat> But when you get in the car, it'll give you one of two messages, one of three messages. There's one that says, um, source not connected. One says, source not connected. One, when, you're, when your phone, the source, connects to the display, it says, <clears throat> source connected. But then there's another one that says, source disconnected. And I thought about this. I was on my way over, and I looked at beautiful screen, beautiful display. But here's what I found is, as beautiful as it is, when people get in, they say, oh, what a beautiful display. What I discovered is, if the display, if, I, if my phone is not connected to the display, it is a beautiful display that means nothing. If the display is not connected to the source, all it is is a beautiful display. And quite honestly, for some of us, our worship, I, I love, I love the screens. I love the screens. I love, I love the hazers. I love the lights. I, I love the, I love how we, how we I dim the lights to create intimacy. But, but if the worshiper is not connected to the source, it's just, it's just a beautiful display, a beautiful display I can't make any phone calls on, no, no, no phone connection, a, a beautiful display that I can't even play any music on. Be be beautiful display 
But if the display is disconnected from the source, there is no navigation. Beautiful. Beautiful display. There are three people in here. One, there's some of you in this place, you may be connected to the source. Strong connection. There are others in this place that are not connected to the source. And there are some in here that were connected, but have become like that beautiful display says, disconnected from the source. And if I'm disconnected from the source, like the phone, I, you lose the keenness of communication. If I'm disconnected from the display, I'm going through life. But there just ain't no music. There's no, there's no inspiration. There's no joy. There's no lift. I'm, I'm tossed by everything I'm going through. I'm, I'm depressed by every mood. If my finances are up, I'm up. If my finances are down, I'm down. If they're talking about me, I'm down. If they, if, if they, they lift me up, if they, they celebrate me, I'm up. You, you, you're being tossed and driven. You, you've lost your music. You've lost your inspiration. You've lost that very thing that, that drives you. When you're disconnected from the source, There's no navigation. Like the children of Israel, you end up on an 11-day journey for 40 years. And God sent me in this place to declare to somebody, you've been going in circles when he's ordained, when you're connected to the source, for your feet to be established. For your paths to be made straight. For high places to be leveled. For your feet to be orchestrated around the ambushes of your enemy. When you're connected to the source, you get your sense of vision back. You get your sense of purpose back. You get your sense of call back. When you're connected to the source, you, you gain your authority back. When you're connected to the source, you lose timidity and you also retain your boldness when you're connected to the source. You tried to do it without the source. You tried to bless those who curse you without the source. You've tried to, to uphold those who lied on you without the source. You tried to make it another day, believe that God is able, even though there's sickness in your body, but you tried to do it without the source. And I'm not talking about cerebrally understanding that God is with me. I'm not just talking about your philosophical or theological framework. No, I'm talking about the person. The source is not an idea. The source is not a thought. The source is not a philosophy. The source is not a belief system. The source is a person. The person of the Holy Spirit that not only fills our lives, but that consumes us in every way, that fills us to fullness. That's what your grandmother was talking about when she said, this joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. How could they walk through slavery and still keep a praise on their lips, and we can't praise God because we broke up with our girlfriend? How is it? that their backs were whipped, but they still sang songs of Zion. It's because they didn't have a Porsche, they didn't have a Bentley, they didn't live in Beverly Hills, but one thing they had, we got to find again. They were connected, God, I feel. They were connected to the source, the source of peace, the source of life, the source of healing, the source of deliverance, the source of salvation, the source of covering, the source of power, the source that is above every other source. They were baptized, connected to the source. Yeah, yeah. 
That's why we're still singing the songs they created with no education. God, I feel that. That's why it's still in our bones generations later because they didn't have everything we have. They didn't have a band. They didn't have an instrument. But their heartbeat was their instrument. Their voice was. They were connected to the source. How were Christians in the first century martyred, thrown to the lions? Their bodies were fixed with ropes to horses that ran in separate directions, pulling their physical bodies apart. And all they had to do to make it stop was simply denounce Christ. How do you give your life? How do you hang on the cross? They say Peter was hung upside down according to legend. How do you die for what you believe in? How do you suffer for what you believe in? How do you fight the good fight though you feel like giving up? You you can't do that with mind over matter. You can't do that in your own strength or your own ability. But you can only do that when you're connected to the source. When the Lord takes you and not only touches you, but baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. And we gotta go, but I need some people who are ready to say, God, I need to be connected once again to the source. For some of you, you may have never been connected. For others, you need to be reconnected. But you're tired of living a marginal life. You're tired of walking with no power. You're tired of your enemies getting the better of you. You're tired of getting out of bed defeated. You're tired of putting off your ministry call to another year. You're tired of the circumstances of life. God said, you tried everything else. He said, but now it's time to be filled and to be filled afresh. Every hand lifted. Every hand lifted. Listen to me. I'm going to need you to trust you. I'm going to need to trust you to be responsible in our time of giving, don't leave here. And they're going to put the, the instructions for offering up on the screen. If you want to text to give, if you want to give an envelope, if you, however you want to give, you can do that. They're going to put that up on the screen. But I don't have time right now to do a formal offering. I'm going to trust you to do what you know to do. Because we need you to follow up with that. And to stay consistent in your worship and giving. But I'm going to trust you to do what you're supposed to do, but I can't break this right now for an offering. But I need, no, no, it's not offering time. Not yet. You, you, you will leave them at the boxes on the way out. Make sure you grab an envelope or see these greeters. They'll give them to you. You can text to give and all those things, but right now, the Lord gathered us in this place. For many of you in this place, You've never had, for some of you, you've never had the first baptism. You've never put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your and Savior and have the Holy Spirit baptize you into the body of Christ. There are some of you in this place, you have done that, but you've never been baptized physically in the water and you want to do that. Call our church office. Let us know online. We'll make sure we get you connected. But the, the call today is for the third baptism. That is, that you'll be baptized in the Spirit. Now listen to me. For some of you in this place, when we lay hands and pray for you, the manifestation of the Spirit will flow like it did for me at the donut shop. You will speak in other tongues. For others of you in this place, it's happened that it's happened later in other prayer meetings, but, but in this meeting, some of you will leave with what they did in Acts 4, which is not other tongues, but it is that they spoke the word of God boldly, boldly. Your feeling will be marked by a boldness of speech again, a tenacity toward the things of God again, fuel for the mission again, a resilience that will lift you up though things have been pushing you down again. That will be the manifestation for some of you of your feeling. For others of you, God is going to begin to give you comfort 
That will be the manifestation. An overwhelming peace, an overwhelming comfort is going to flood your soul with everything you've been going through. Even before your circumstance changes, God is getting ready to alter the condition of your mind. He's going to alter the condition of your spirit. He's going to give you supernatural peace that only comes from the true and the living God. Peace will be your portion. For others, there'll be divine guidance. For some of you, there have been life-altering decisions that you need to make. And it feels as if like the children of Israel, you've been walking in circles. You've been asking God. You've been praying to God for answers. And you have no answers. You're as convinced of one thing as the other. From day to day, it's like you're vacillating. You're struggling with decisiveness. But in this feeling, answers, answers, answers. God, I feel this. Answers, Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, speak. Answers are going to begin to come. You're going to be connected to the source once again. And before the answers come divinely through you, the channel of communication is going to be opened up again between you and God. Here is the fourth thing that's going to happen for somebody. For some of you, the hurt that has emerged in this pandemic has discouraged you. And while you blame the source, your real frustration has been with God. That's why it's a struggle for you to walk into this place. It's been a struggle for you to worship. Your mind will not let you say that you're upset and disappointed with God, but your body will not lie. You can no longer lift your hands. There is no longer joy in your worship. And you think it is your husband or your ex-husband, your wife or your ex-wife, your business partner, your enemy, your adversary. You may think it's the people that didn't call on you and disappointed you or the opportunity that passed you by but deep down in your unconscious mind and deep down in your spirit you've been disappointed by God and because you've been disappointed by God your worship has been short-circuited your communication has been short-circuited you seeking him early in the morning has come to a cease your prayer life has been non-existent and you have not been able to identify it but the Holy Spirit brought you in this place Place to let you know that God is big enough to handle your disappointment with him and even though you're disappointed with him he said he's still coming your way he's still coming towards you he's still pursuing you he brought you in this place you thought you came for another word he brought you in this place to give you a fresh encounter a fresh feeling that's gonna cause you to fall on your knees and fall on your face again that's gonna cause you to rise up and seek him early in the morning that's gonna cause the faith that you lost to be restored Lord, God is going to fill you with bread. Y'all know what to do with giving. If that first call was for you and you want to know more about what it means to be saved, our ministers, our prayer counselors come now, are going to come, they're going to stand all around this stage. But I want to pray for every single person in this place. Every single person who said, I need a fresh feeling. I need my ministers. Come on, y'all. I need my ministers. We're going to lay hands on every person. After we lay hands, you can go back to your seat or you can go home. But I want you to hit this stage. If you said, I need that third baptism. I need that third feeling. Or I need to be filled afresh by the power of God. If that's you, if that's you, just make your way this way. I'll leave nobody untouched. Nobody untouched. Greeters. Greeters. Yeah. Come on, lay hands, lay hands. Lay hands. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Moving your way. Fresh Fresh. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Baptized, Lord. Baptized. Baptized. Baptized in your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Come on. Fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. Baptize, Lord. 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 Baptize, Lord.
in the name of Jesus. Put it up on stage. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Take a few more minutes just to worship. Just to worship him. Just to worship him. Hallelujah. Fresh wind, God. Fresh wind. Would you do it again? You healed bodies before. Would you do it again? You've accelerated the kingdom move in the earth through us before. Would you do it again, Lord? You healed my grandmother. Would you do it again, God? You opened up doors of opportunity for your glory. Would you do it again? You give it financial breakthrough, God. Would you do it again, God? You renewed our minds before, God. Would you do it again, Lord? You delivered from the hand of the enemy. Would you do it again? A fresh wind, fresh wind. Not just in this house, but in our house, in every house. With everybody listening, fresh wind in the name of Jesus. Fresh, fresh, fresh. God, what you do it. God, what you do it? 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 The Lord said, there's a blessing for the lingerers. There's a blessing for the hungry. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake shall be filled. There is a blessing for those who will go after his presence. There is a blessing for those that lift up their voice and cry out for more and open up their hearts and say, God, I won't stop until I'm filled with fullness. There's a blessing like Elijah. The Bible said when Elijah went to heaven, there were a host of prophets that walked with him but only one got the double portion of his spirit it said because he stayed with him to the end he was willing to linger longer than the others he wasn't there for convenience he wasn't there for comfort he was not there for a cute service he said whatever it costs me for however long I have to be here I'm gonna be here till the end and when Elijah got to the end there was only one person there Elisha the mantle fell from heaven and he got everything that he wanted and then some the Bible says that Jacob wrestled with God until the cool of the day he wrestled with God all night long he said I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me he wrestled with him he said I'm not gonna let you go I've been trying to apprehend you I've been trying to catch you my whole life now that I have you I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me God sent me in this place to declare the blessing for those of you who lingered behind to wait is that you got him now you got him now you have him now I need somebody who won't let go until they get everything that they came for how do you hold on? You, you hold on by worshiping Him. You hold on by opening up your heart. You hold on by saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. Hold on to Him just for a little while longer. And there is a second blessing. There's a second blessing. There's a double portion for the people that are hold on to Him and not let go. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I can't do this.
this without you. I can't do this disconnected from the source in you. I live and you. I move and you. I have my being. I count it all as dumb. Count it all as worthless for the excellency that I found in you. God, I sold my inheritance. I sold my dreams a long time ago to put my life in your hands. Now, God, I ask that you take me up. That you take me up again as I hold on to you. Hold on to me. And don't let me go as I hold on to you. Lord, I pray that you bring me into the place that I saw when I was a child. I pray that you bring me into the place that's been prophesied over my life. I pray that you bring me into a higher height, into new glory. In the name of Jesus, I'm hungry for it. I'm hungry. I'm hungry, God, and nothing else will do. Nothing, nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. God, I need your feeling. Hallelujah. God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I can't do it without your presence. I can't live without your presence. I can't leave this great people without your presence, God. I can't see for my future without your presence. I can't make it through my pain without your presence. God, I won't know which way to go without your presence, God. Would you lead me? Would you guide me? Would you fill me afresh with your precious Holy Spirit? God, do it again. 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 More. 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 More of you. More of you. More of you. More of you, God. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Would you do it? Would you do it again? Please, sir, do it again. God, would you open the windows of heaven? Would you open the windows of heaven? Would you open the windows of heaven and not just give material blessing, but spiritual blessing? Would you release our inheritance that has been waiting on us? Would you release the responsibility that has been waiting on our maturity? In the name of Jesus, would you do it again, God? You've trusted us. You've trusted us to steward past moves. But God, we've become uncomfortable We've lost our hunger. We've lost our thirst. Would you forgive us, God? Would you forgive us? As your people turn towards you. May you move the vain things that have preoccupied us. And fill every void with your presence. Oh, Lord, we turn toward you. We hold on. We hold on to you. And I ask that you would do it again. That you would breathe afresh. That you would feel afresh. And that you would cause everything that accompanies the feeling of your presence to be evident. I pray that you restore the gifts. There are silent prophets in this place whose declaration has been dampened by failure. But it was failure you saw before they ever failed. There are people because of fear and the loss of faith who have become fearful, more fearful of men's faces and committed to declaring your truth. We've no longer, we've stopped taking risk in you. I pray that as you fill us afresh, 
You cause us not only to dream again, but to risk again. To risk being a failure if you don't show up. To risk stepping out on faith when it makes no sense to anyone. But you and maybe a witness, Lord, I thank you for the restoration. The restoration of all that we've lost. I pray that you would fill us afresh. give you honor. We'll give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Come on, just open up your mouth just for a few more seconds. Just for a few more seconds and bless your God. Bless your God. Come on, open up the lines of communication again. Bless your God. serve as an extension of your divine hand. Your hands extended to your people to bless God. God, would you bless them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you bless them? Yeah. The world thinks they've seen. The world thinks they've seen what God does done through you. There'll be nothing lost. I can't even say God's going to restore a river of flow through you to the nations of this world because he's not restoring anything. In the next three to six months, he's going to manifest the things that he's shown you since childhood that you haven't even uttered They have your testimony but there are some pictures there's some snapshots of the magnitude of what God would do as his vessel that people haven't even seen yet and so Lord I thank you for my brother I thank you I thank you yeah I thank you for the restoration of it all but not just the restoration of it all I thank you for the first time like Joseph I hear the Lord saying you've had incremental manifestations of your rulership Joseph ruled in Potiphar's house and also had ruled in prison. But that wasn't the height. That was evident that the hand of God was on him. And what the world has seen has been incremental doses of God's ultimate call, what he's shown you, the magnitude of what he's shown you since childhood. It's been favor. But he said he's getting ready to move you into the palace where what you broker spiritually will be water to the nations of the world that will not only shift culture but will bring healing to the nation not the restoration but the manifestation of what God hadn't even done for you yet Lord I thank you I thank you I thank you I thank you that it won't come like a stream I thank you God that it'll come like a rushing flood. Lord, leveling everything in its path. No opposition. Lord, I pray that you will cause the tide to rise like a tsunami and level everything that is before it for your glory. Lord, I thank you that you will use your servant in the end time prophecy where it is declared that your glory will cover the earth as the water covers the sea in the name of Jesus Lord to release it over his life in Jesus is I thank you every one of these minstrels every one of these minstrels 
for his faithfulness for his faithfulness for his heart towards you like David I pray oh Lord that you would bring elevation that you would open doors of opportunity I thank you for the purity of his heart and I thank you for all that you will do Father God in his path with all that is before him in the name of Jesus I pray I pray Father God that what has been a struggle will be released with greater ease in the name of Jesus I pray that he won't chase opportunities but opportunities and blessing will chase him will overtake him will chase him down in the name of Jesus would you do it God would you do it 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 would you bless him would you bless him with all that he stands in need of I thank you for his heart I thank you for his skill I thank you for filling him afresh new pathways new sound I pray Father God for a fresh wind and the manifestation of what this world has not heard in Jesus name God I thank you Lord I thank you I thank you for your faithfulness I thank you for open doors of opportunity I thank you for blessing everything his hands touch in the name of Jesus God I thank you I thank you for my brother I pray your blessing I pray your blessing I pray that you would bless him I pray that you would expand this territory in the name of Jesus do it Lord I thank you I thank you I thank you I thank you that you would bless in the name of Jesus release new patterns new ways new sound ways in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for drawing him back to yourself. In Jesus' name, in a clear and public way. I pray for acceleration to his path. Would you bless him physically, mentally, spiritually, and monetarily in Jesus' name? I thank you. Thank you. In fact, do this. Just put your hands with your palms up in, in a posture to receive. For some of you, yeah, they're there. It comes in different ways, in different ways. But sometimes God wants to show you that it doesn't always take the elevation of my voice or the passion. Though we don't frown upon it, we receive it all. Sometimes it just comes through request. Just lift your hands. And I want you, nothing specific in mind, because your mind's too limited for all that God wants to do. Sometimes we need to pray prayers that are bigger than ourselves by entrusting ourselves fully and completely to the Lord. Some of the greatest blessings in my life did not come, and I know in this day and age they tell you you have to be specific and you have to name it. If you don't know where you're going, God won't do it. Well, I didn't know where I was going half the time. But there are seasons in my life where I just lifted my hands to the Lord. I said, God, would you give me everything that you have for me? Would you give me? Would you give me the things? Would you give me the thing that my faith is too weak to believe for? Things, Carl, that I wouldn't even ask Lamar. Sometimes you just have to say, God, I want everything you have for me. Because it bypasses your atrophied faith and goes directly to the source. I, I want to pray a big prayer. And what I noticed about big prayers is they don't always have to be very specific. Jabez just said, God, I want you to bless me indeed. He said, enlarge my territory, keep me from evil, no specific things. But, but before we even got there, he covered a host of things by just saying, God, would you, 
but you blessed me indeed. I don't know what you're going to put in it, but I pray that you would enlarge my territory. Just whatever I was thinking, Lord, I say bigger. I say bigger, God. Bigger, Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord and pray a big prayer. Ask him to give you all that he's had in mind for you. It says before the foundation of the world. And ask him to allow you to believe that you can receive it when it comes. That's it. I can't do that for you, but I need you to pray that prayer. I need you to pray that prayer. I'm going to ask him. What you doing, God? Would you grant to us everything that you had in mind for us? Would you give us the things that are beyond us? Things we're too ashamed to ask for. Things we may be too embarrassed to ask for. Would you be kind enough to release to us the things we don't even feel we deserve? Yeah, Lord, do it. Yeah, do it, God. Yeah, do it, God. Holy Spirit. Yeah, receive it, people of God. Receive it, drink it in. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it, yeah, yeah. Receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it. No, we don't want to guard your heart. I want you to open your heart. Yeah, receive it. Open it. Open it, yeah, open it, open it, open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open yourself. Open it. Receive, receive. Receive, receive. Drink afresh. Yeah, man. Drink afresh. Yeah, there it is. There it is, Lord. Drink afresh. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Mm. Yeah. Ain't that sweet? Yeah, it's present. The presence of the living God. The presence of the living God. Drink it. Drink afresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Drink it. Yeah, there it is. Let it wash over you. Let it wash over you. Let it wash over you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. We thank you. Clear? Yeah, that your presence is real. Give us all you have. you would just go bless somebody real quick just go embrace 
pray someone. Just pray somebody real quick. Embrace somebody. Just let a sweet presence rest. We don't have to end on a high. Listen to me, just right here is fine. I want you to pass the peace to somebody. If you feel the peace of God resting on you, just go. Look around. Find somebody to bless. Just go. Just go hug them. Just go. Lay hands on them. Just, just bless them wherever they are. Just bless them. Don't be ashamed. Take all that boldness and just go, just go love somebody. Just go love somebody. We're gonna get out of here. Just let the sweetness, the sweet presence, the sweet presence of Holy Spirit. Just come on. If you have the, just let it rest on somebody. Just let it rest on somebody. Stand together, come on, just stand with the king. If you're able.
ministers. Line up here by every one of my ministers. Line up. And I need every one of my leaders who still remains here. I need you to line up right here. Every one of my leaders who's still here in the building. Every one of you, come on. Bless you, Elder Taylor. Bless you. Every one of you, come on, come on, come on. All my leaders, even the media team, forget the media, come on. Everybody, come on, come on. All of the leaders that are still here, my hospitality, everyone is still here. whether the greatest moves of God or whether the greatest years of life, ministry, and impact are behind you. The Lord sent me to this place and said, you're here today for it to be made clear there was a felt for you deficit but it was not to mark your decline but rather to highlight your destiny there's a passage in Deuteronomy where God speaks to his children as I've humbled you and tested you to see what was in your heart he's humbled you he said and tested you see what's in your heart because in these times of challenge the contents of our heart are they come to the surface not for God to disqualify but for us to see and for adjustment and recalibration to be made but he says this deficit again is not for you to lose ground but it's to highlight what I have ahead he said, I've humbled you and tested you to see what was in your heart. How? He goes on to say it this way. He says, I've humbled you by causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna. This hunger is not like a hunger for you, God, I'm chasing after you. This hunger is God intentionally creating a void or a need and let you sit in it for a minute. You sit there until what's superficial begins to fall off. You sit there until false humility falls off. You sit there until all the niceties fall off. When I used to practice train with, with CJ MMA another boxing coach they would wear you low they would wear you out so you had nothing left with conditioning and that's when they would start the boxing lesson and never understood that because I wanted to look good when I was hitting the bag and moving as people came in, but I look sloppy. 
because they wore me out before they ever started the boxing lesson. And I said, why would you do that? You do that just to embarrass me in front of all these people? They said, no, but, but when you don't have anything left, you're forced to depend on your form. When you don't have anything left, when you don't have any strength left, you, you can't use your strength to just muscle through this. You can't throw your arm out just to be pretty. When you have nothing left, you, that's when your skill emerges. That's when what is real and accurate manifests. He said, I've caused you to hunger by putting you in a deficit position where you feel worn out and you have nothing left to cause you to see that man does not live on bread alone, but that every word, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This wearing down does not mean you've lost ground or you're weaker than you've ever been. The Lord said this is preparation for what I'm getting ready to feed you with. The vision I'm getting ready to feed you with. The clarity I'm getting ready to give you. The renewed boldness for my ways. The new hunger that I'm going to fill you with. He said this deficit was not to kill you. This deficit was a setup for me to give you more. And the reason that you, the Lord put it on my heart to have you come to this in front of this stage as clearly as the Lord said to Minister Nero that he's given her a double portion. I don't know what's ahead. I don't know what lies ahead. I have some things in mind. But for what God's getting ready to do, where he's getting ready to take me, I cannot hold down this house but we have to hold down this house. Which requires the amplification of the grace of God on your life. And I saw this snapshot. I'm not a huge, you know, the, the man of God error and all that stuff. I get it. I, we pay honor and all those things, but I want you to hear my heart. You know my heart. This is not bring attention to myself, but it's what God wants to do in this house, in you. When Elijah went up, he said, and hopefully God's not taking me to glory like right now. But there is, I feel like a passing of the baton. I don't know why. But some of you felt it, it feels like there's a passing of the baton. God's getting, getting you ready for something you didn't know what it is. It's for the passing of baton, God's going to amplify the grace on your lives. And I saw it not as a baton, I saw it as a mantle. Like when Elijah went up, he, he dropped his mantle. Elisha caught it. And here's what it said. It said that he received a double portion of the Spirit. It's very interesting that we receive a, a baptism of the Holy Spirit, but there's also, I was said, a baptism in a connection, divine connection and leadership with leaders. God is going to use you in this place. And I mean this in all humility as extensions of my pastoral leadership here. And that is not an elevation of me. That is a lowering of me to elevate you. He said you'll be extensions of my pastoral leadership in this place. And if it's done real good, what does it mean? It means they won't look for me. Jesus said, it's better that I go away. There's certain things they won't look for me for anymore if you carry the grace to handle it. There's certain answers that I will not have to give if God would honor this last prayer before we go as God would give you a double portion. Alicia, I've seen you in the spirit. I've seen you with your heart yielded toward God. Yeah. And I believe that God can do more through you 
than anything you've seen him do through me to this day. He says, lift your eyes, get the trajectory higher. If you believe it, God can do double. God says he can do double. There have been double you've been looking for in your faithfulness. And with all that God's blessed you with, there are nights where you say, but this is not everything. And God said he ain't finished. He's going to restore the years. And not even the locust ate up. He's going to restore the years you thought the locust ate up. He's going to restore stuff that has been buried in disappointment that you haven't uttered to anybody but God. He's going to amplify your voice and your reach. When I prayed for you, I saw, I saw you like a sage. I saw the next generation coming and sitting at your feet for divine wisdom. For divine revelation. For answers that they knew to ask. And questions that they didn't even ask yet. God's going to give it to you and you're going to speak it to them. Believing it's him. When I said the prophetic, he's fanning into flame for many in this place. The prophetic. There's been this tension. There's been this tension. And, and, and he wants to set free the prophetic in you set you on fire with the prophetic when we had the move of God and bodies were being healed and the revival broke out years ago 10 years ago or so there were cessationists that walked in there, there were professors that walked in there people that didn't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit they walked in for prayer, we didn't teach this we didn't pray, they got halfway down the aisle fell under the power of God, got up speaking in other tongues, the tongues that they as professors didn't even believe the spirit of the Lord poured out there. Our church doubled in size in three, four months. And I remember this, the Lord, we, we cried out, we sat there and we just cried out for more of God, more of God, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you. And, and, and you and, and, and everyone there, it, the, the glory was so heavy, the priest could not stand the minister. They all fell into the power of God. You were the first one that got up. You stood up it was the first time in years in that context that we heard you stood up and in the voice as, a, as, an, as an extension of the voice of the Lord you said the Lord God says here is all that I will do and you begin to share things and listen everything that you shared that day everything marked the movement from that day forward as God poured out his spirit for months every day yeah yeah Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here's what happened. It was such a powerful move of God that every force attempted to suppress the purity of that move and the strength of that move. And it's the first time I've known you as a teacher. I've known you as a man of God. I've known you as a man of integrity. But that day I came to know you as the prophet of the Lord. God said he's going to restore your voice. He's going to restore your strength. He's going to restore your boldness. You're going to believe when it comes to mind as from the Lord. And you're going to speak things to people that you had no way of knowing unless it was revealed by God. You're going to give them secrets that they've uttered to nobody but the Lord. And not only that, but the Bible shows us in the Old Testament when Israel was going against, the Aram was fighting against Israel, Elijah caused Israel to evade the, the traps that the enemy had set, so much so that the king thought that there was a traitor in their camp. And before he killed, looked for a traitor to kill, someone came to him and said, no, there's a prophet by the name of Elijah, king, who tells the children of Israel the very words that you utter in your bedroom. What was that for? It was divine wisdom from God to help navigate the people of God around the traps that the enemy has set. The Lord said your prophetic declaration will not only be things to come, the secrets of men's hearts, 
but it will be to the salvation to save the people of God from the traps that the enemy has set. He's, getting, he's opening your eyes. I see like Saul, when the scales fell off of his eyes, you've been saved, but there are, there are scales falling off your eyes. And when your eyes open again, there'll be a greater measure of discernment. You'll be able to see like the watchman on the wall, the enemy coming from a wild mile away to be able to sound to the troops. Be, get ready for battle. Your words will safeguard the lives of people. Your words will safeguard households. Your words will heal marriages. Your words will bring wayward children home. Your words will keep people. I see business leaders coming to you for prayer, for what they should do next, and God beginning to speak to you through visions, wisdom, and revelation, partnerships that they're to look out for, people that are in their camp that are sabotaging progress, God will open your eyes as the scales fall off to the attacks of the enemy, the traps, the tricks, the pitfalls for his glory and for the advancement of his body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't, 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 don't lift him up. Leave him there. Let the waves hit him. Lay hands on him. Lay hands on him and ask God to let it be. And let, yeah, just let it wash over him. Wash over him. We try to get people up too fast. Let it wash over him. Let it wash. Let it baptize him. Let it wash over him in waves and waves and waves and waves of his glory and waves of confirmation and waves of revelation. Lay hands on him. Go ahead. Lay hands, y'all. Lay hands on him and pray that it shall come to pass. It'll happen. That it'll happen. Pastor Sharon Dean, I saw you. Lord, is giving you a new boldness. And, and even after all these years of walking with him, he's even with greater skill and precision. I see skill and precision, a trained tongue, you've, you've been tempered and you've watched and you speak in wisdom, but even with greater clarity and accuracy, I feel like, and I know this has been spoken over many, but it's your portion as well, that even with less words, there'll be abiding power, there'll be a release of impartation. There's always a place for information, but God is going to begin to release impartation I mean the level of impartation if you remember the the apostles they walked in those who walked in their shadow were healed they walked in people tried to mimic it later but it wasn't about that it was it was God showing that when the power of God overshadows you you could do more with less even 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 the cloth that they had that touched people the sick the sick were healed and it wasn't about the cloth it wasn't about their shadow we don't need to reduplicate shadows and cloths and all that stuff it was simply to show that when the power of God overfills you and overshadows you it doesn't always require as much of you and you felt the weight of ministry God's getting ready to do an ease double what you were able to do with all of your labor he's gonna give you ease you will see his power you will see his glory in greater measure but it'll be marked by the ease you've labored well the only time heaven is not the only time where God calls us into his rest but I hear the Lord calling you now into his rest, into his rest, into the magnification of his grace through you, but in rest. Every leader, lift your hand. I'm just, and this is not strange, it's not weird. I'm just doing what the Lord told me to do now. Y'all don't film this and put it on church milk or anything crazy. I don't want to be a mean. The Lord told me just symbolic gesture in the same way that we mentioned sometimes there needs to be a natural sign of an invisible reality in the same way that we're invisibly baptized into the body of Christ we need to be visually and physically baptized into water so that it sets in as a demarcation of that decision or that moment and this is just a towel it's not a mantle but a day for every leader I'm just going to cause this to rest. I may slap you on the head with it. I may just, just touch it. 
Put your phones away, camera phones away. But I want you to remember this day, if you're open, that you're opening and this is all you're asking is that God would give you a double portion. And I'm not intimidated by it, by what you've seen in me, that he would do more in you. It'll look different. I want you to receive that. I want you to believe that. I want you to believe that the move I just talked about through this house is not behind us. Trinity, I don't, I don't believe it's a mistake that God's orchestrating all this. I, harmony, yes, no mistake, man. We feel no mistake that we're gathered like this. God, in unique ways, is bringing people that have that have experienced and encounter moves of God in various places in the earth. I don't think. I think this is just the beginning. This is the United States, but He's getting ready, Harmony, to bring some folks that they're gonna come. They're gonna just God's gonna begin to call people to the West Coast from Africa and from because they need to see some of what we've seen, man. Sometimes it needs to be contagious. You can't watch that on YouTube. Sometimes it needs to be somebody in your context that, is, that, has, that has walked in those movements and has seen those things. And is, You know, it's funny. That's why at times the stuff that we get all excited about in church, like, oh, man, oh, I, I praise God for everybody's grace. But when you've seen people who walk into a town and the earth shakes when they walk, and witch doctors go running, it, it's kind of hard to get wild by all the stuff we think is dope. I think it's good, but God's getting ready to bring some people that, from places that have been obscure, that weren't in the spotlight, but have been in heaven's sight. They've been brokering things spiritually. He's going to bring them. I just see it, man. I just see it. Because all of us have been chasing, we've been looking for God not to do what he's done, but all of us have been believing that God has still got something up his sleeve that he wants to do. I think it's coming. I don't, I don't know how to quite put it all together, but I know it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And if you'll believe that, you can be a part of that. God will do it. Every leader, just lift your hands for a moment. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that as the mantle fell on Elisha, Lord, I thank you for a mantle. Thank you for your 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 mantle. I thank you, God. Let your mantle fall. Double prayer. Yes, Lord. It was in that meeting. It was in those prayer meetings. You had been sick. You were concerned about your health. Your family was concerned about you. And the Lord, in that meeting, you were there every night. The church doors open. And the Lord spoke to you that he would extend your life. Look at me. Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? You've seen people that prayed for you and were healthier than you were that are no longer with us. And here you are with hands lifted to the Lord. Here you are with health in your body. Here you are with a praise in your spirit over a decade later. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. God, I thank you. Now, even now, Lord, I thank you for a fresh, fresh double, Lord. Lord, would you do it with my sister? Double portion. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, the things that she saw when she was a child, Lord, would you do it? Exceed expectation. Would you do through her what she hadn't had eyes to see and didn't believe was possible? Would you do it, God? Uh, restore, restore, restore. Restore, Lord. I thank you for your boldness. I thank you that this round will not be another lap in the wilderness, but this round will go into the promise. Yeah, we'll go into the promise. A restoration, Father God, a restoration. Oh, Lord, double. Double, Lord. Double, Lord. Double portion, Lord, double. Double portion, Lord, double. double. Double, Lord, double. Double, Lord, double, double. Double, double Lord, double, 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 double. Double, God, would you do it? Would you do it? Would you do it, Lord, double? Hey, Lord, would you do it? Would you do it, Lord? Yeah, would you do it? Hey, Lord, I feel like Saul 
when they were looking for the king of Israel, the prophet had spoken that, that the king of Israel was Saul with specificity. And when they came looking for him, they said he was hiding amongst the stuff. He's hiding amongst the stuff. As I wanted to lay hands on you, I saw the grace of not just a king, but a priest, the, the robustness of your ministry call. It's not just a reclaiming what you had. It is like I share with everybody today. The, the word today is not a reclaiming, but the word today is a manifestation of what you saw but have not yet experienced as it relates to what God wants to do through your life. And there have been storms, the peripheral storms. I don't know what they are, but I want you to understand that they've been a distraction to take you from your rightful place. I saw, like Saul, when they went to go find him, they had to go find him. They found him amongst the stuff, buried in stuff. Called to be king, but hiding in the stuff. Sometimes we can hide in various assignments, and you do everything you do excellently. But God said, now it's time to, to come out of the stuff and claim the call. And he's going to accompany you every step of the way with authority that you need to walk it out. So I thank you, Father. I thank you now, Lord, for a double portion. I thank you, Lord, that he'll come out from amongst the stuff that you cause him to run. And his running will be declaration of your word. Lord, teaching with clarity, with precision, with accuracy. Helping the world to understand. I pray that you would cause the, the priest in him to rise. Explaining to this world what you're like, your ways. A sense of who you are. May you saturate his teaching with your anointing. May lights come on as he opens his mouth. In the way that the candlesticks in the holy place illuminated the table of shoe bread, likewise your Holy Spirit will illuminate your word to him that your will will be laid plainly before your people. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you'll do. Double portion, God, I thank you for your double portion, Lord. Thank you for granting wisdom, divine insight, not just for business, but for life. I thank you that you'll be, you'll be a source, a resource and a source. I pray that you would increase the resources you entrust to his hands so that he'd be a blessing beyond himself, that his family would be blessed, but also that he would be a blessing. But then I pray that you make him a source of knowledge, of information, of wisdom for life. As people come to seek it, Lord, I thank you for Elder Taylor. I thank you for the gift that he is to so many of us. I thank you for his years of faithfulness. I thank you, God, for his declaration, like Job, that you give, that you take away, but he won't run from you. He'll run towards you, run towards you, run towards you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank you for this declaration. I thank you for what he's done. I thank you for that he's kept his hand in yours through every trial. Now, Lord, I pray that you would bring a unique delight to his heart. Joy, overwhelming joy to his household. God, fill him afresh. He's prayed for others, Lord. We pray for him today. He's laid hands and watched the sick recover, Lord. Now we lay hands and pray that you give him healing. Lord, he's lifted up, up his voice early in the morning to cover the saints that didn't even know he was praying. I pray, Father God, that you raise up people that are calling out his name before he ever wakes up. And that, Father God, joy would be his portion, strength, and health would be his inheritance, Father God. I thank you for blessing his family, his greatest love. I thank you for his daughters. I thank you for his extended children. I thank you for the surrogate father you've made him to so many people in here. Now I pray that you would cause him to be overtaken with blessing in the name of Jesus. Listen, I've never done this before, but I, 
I don't feel like it's at this moment an offering or anything like that for him, but I felt like this. I felt like an open door forever. That every time you see him, and even those who don't know him, this is possible because of the sacrifice he and others made. Every time you see him, open door forever. Whatever the Lord tells you to do for him, you do it. Don't ask questions. If it's a gift, if it's money, if it's a hug, if it's a word of encouragement, if it's a card, write a letter telling him what he meant to you, is meant to you. For it, as long as he walks the face of this earth, you do that. As the Lord just said. Because it would take our lifetime to pour back into him what he's poured into so many. And the greatest blessings aren't prescriptive, but the greatest blessings are spontaneous, often prompted by the Holy Spirit. And every time the Holy Spirit speaks to you about him, you do what the Spirit tells you. And I believe with all my heart, even though I don't know what it is, that God's going to honor you in your latter years more than you've ever been honored in your entire life. We love you. We have a sign today. We have Daryl and Kathy who love this church. He loved your grandfather. Yeah. And when they went <coughs> and moved away, every anniversary, yeah. he would see Daryl. Mm. He would see Kathy. So it's definitely a sign of a person, of people who love this church. Yeah. So. I thank God to see them today. Another thing was your grandfather married us, me and Dolly, one Sunday, and Daryl and Kathy the next. Praise the Lord. Wow, amen. Lord, I thank you for a double portion. Would you give them the wisdom, the knowledge? divine wisdom. You said that if we asked of it, you would freely give it. Yes. Lord, he has a heart for you. Yes. God, he has integrity. Yes. He has a work ethic. Yes. But would you give him what he lacks yes. to fill the post that you've assigned him yes. to the fullness feel like David when David knew that Solomon was stepping into something but he was getting up in age and wouldn't be there with him again I don't plan to go anywhere hopefully but he asked God if he would make up the difference he he prayed a prayer of blessing over him he set things in order and, and as I laid hands on you I felt like the Lord is saying that there's a, a gift of wisdom that he's got to give you that he wants to give you like Solomon because wisdom will fill up the space for the assignment that time has not been able to teach you yet I was 19 when I came in the church the average age was 70 or so 65 70 I had no idea what I would say. I had no idea how I would lead. I had no idea what God could do that would cause people that changed my father's diapers to journey with me. And God reminded me of a prayer I prayed when I was 12 years old that God would give me wisdom. And his anointing and wisdom has closed, closed the gap for what experience, I didn't have time and experience to know yet. God, would you give him not only a double portion, but would you give him divine wisdom? In the name of Jesus, in increasing measure. God, I thank you, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. A double portion, God. A double portion, Lord, would you do it? God, a double portion, Lord. Would you cause him to see himself as you see him? 
Would you cause them to see the strength, authority, and the power as you see it? Would he no longer be a grasshopper in his own sight, Father God, but may you show him the mighty warrior that rages on the inside. Cause it to be evident. Cause him to rise up in his own way and release to us what you've given him. And would you bless this, his mother? We thank you for her faithfulness. We thank for you for her as a, as in many respects, a village elder. We thank you that she's mothered and nurtured so many in this place. But I see you now nurturing her with the same nurture she's given. Lord, are there are times where you give your masculine characteristics, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. But then there are other times where you give your feminine characteristics. You say as a mother, comforts her child, so I'll comfort you. As a hen puts her wing over a brood, Father, you say you will do the same to us. And so now, Lord, we release that over her life. May she feel the comfort of you, the lover of her soul. And may, Lord, you cause nurturers to arise, young women and old women alike, that will come with encouragement, that will come with resource as you put it on their heart, that will come with open doors of opportunity that will invite her in to put on display the wisdom that you've entrusted to her. Lord, I thank you that she will be loved on in the way that she's loved on so many, a double portion to her, Father God. I thank you. Thank you for this, your daughter. Lord, who's journeyed with you for years. I pray for divine clarity. I pray, oh Lord, for you to touch every part of her the recesses that are even out of her sight fresh life to them inspiration for the days ahead new sight of how gifts and abilities come together come to bear for the advancement of your kingdom but also the advancement of her and her family's future as well. I pray you to cause their entire household, show them practical things that won't allow them to simply continue to dream about what you've shown, but to, to realize all that they've seen. I thank you for an acceleration of that. I thank you that you make it clear. I thank you for a double portion. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you. For this, your vessel, we prayed for time and again. That strength, authority, wisdom, and ingenuity. Lord, I thank you for all the doors you've opened and continue to open in Hollywood. I thank you for even greater projects that you would entrust her, Father God, not with the territory that she's experienced. But Lord, I thank you for elevation. I thank you for promotion. I thank you for a seat, even a greater seat of authority where decisions are made cause the grace on our life to become more evident give her even greater creativity and bless like you did if you would like Joseph Potiphar's house was blessed because of him the prison was blessed because of him and Pharaoh was blessed because of him I pray that the show that she's now on, Father God, I pray that that, that, would, that that would be the beginning. I pray that they be blessed because of her presence and realize the blessing rests there because of her presence. There's a dimension of blessing because of her presence there. And again, through their own testimony, through their own recommendation, I thank you for the elevation of your daughter. And as you continue to elevate her, I thank you that she'll give you the glory, honor, and praise as her source. 
that she connects to the source, order her steps to higher ground. Tabo, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the journey. Everything was necessary. I thank you for the victories. I thank you for the struggles. Everything was necessary. I thank you for the abundance. I thank you for the time of lack. Everything was necessary. I thank you for the hurt. I thank you for the healing. Everything was necessary. I thank you for the victories. I thank you for the defeats. Everything was necessary. I thank you for the feeding. I thank you for the starving. Everything was necessary. I thank you for the confusion. I thank you for the clarity. Everything was necessary. But now, God, I thank you for the humbling. But, Lord, we know the humbling is not the end. You said I've humbled you to test you and to see what was in your heart so that I could fill you with manna. I thank you for the hunger, but I thank you also for, Father, the feeding. I thank you for the death, but now, God, I thank you for the resurrection. In the name of Jesus, double to your service. Double to your servant. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for double. Double. Lord, his heart's been turned towards you. I pray that you would give him double of all that he has in mind. I pray that you would bless his business. I pray that you'll bless what his hands touch. I pray that you'll give him the wisdom to know how to expand. I thank you, Father God. I thank you that as he celebrated others, I thank you that this be his time of celebration. I thank you that applause, Father God, he'll hear. I thank you, Lord, that as he shined the spotlight on so many, you will shine the spotlight on him. I hear the Lord saying, it's your turn, it's your turn. It's your turn, it's your turn, it's your turn. It's your turn, it's your turn. Don't talk yourself out of it, receive it. It is your turn. When you celebrate it, receive it. It's your turn. When God turns people's hearts towards you, receive it. It is your turn. When he brings influences your way to herald what you've been doing, receive it. It is your turn. Lord, would you do it for him? Would you do it for him in the name of Jesus? Would you do it for him? Lord, give him double. Give him double. Thank y'all for being here. I don't know what's happening. It's 1.30 almost. But thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. I believe in this time that God's going to give you everything you need. said this one is not going to be by sight he said you're not going to see this one coming you're not going to plan your promotion but God's seen the cries of your heart but no one else can see he's seen the frustration that you've been almost ashamed to utter. He's even seen, and rightfully so, the disappointments that have made it difficult to even seek him like you want to. And he can handle it all. But God is going to cause I don't know where it's coming from. 
I don't know what door is going to open. But as you continue to diligently move forward, he's going to cause you to be overtaken by something unexpected that was the very thing you were looking for. And so God, would you do this? Would you do this for my brother? Would you do it for the one that has watched so many receive wondering when and how you would deliver to him what has been in his heart for years. Would you cause him to see himself like you see him? Would you cause him to see himself baptized into your completed work Everything before you is gone. Everything to this moment in time that is not like you is drowned in the baptism into your finished work. He is the righteousness of Christ. Would you cause him to see it? He is a gift from Christ. Would you cause him to know it? For you've given some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be pastors, some to be teachers, the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Would you make evident his call? Would you create room for his call? Would you create a hunger in people or show him the people that are hungry for the very thing he carries? If you make that connection and bring about his elevation, grant him your wisdom. Restore your joy. And everything that he was expecting, Lord, I pray that you would double in the name of Jesus. Cause your mantle to rest on it. Double portion. Yeah, yeah, double portion. Double portion, yeah, yeah. Double portion, yeah. Double portion, yeah. It's yours, it's yours. Look at me, look up at me. Look up at me. I'm doing it for a reason. See how you're looking up at me. Here's what I saw. Stand here. Stand here. something through you that's going to cause this congregation to look up at you. God's going to do something through you that's going to cause the family that you thought didn't notice or see your strength to look up at you. But your biggest question has been, would God do something in your life before it was over? It will cause your kids to look up at you. 
And he says, yes. 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 And he also says, it won't be long. Double, God, in the name of Jesus. Double. 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 Double in the name. Double in the name of Jesus. Double. Double. Would you bless him with his hands touch? Would you bless his path, God? Would you crown him with wisdom? Would you bless the words of his mouth? Would you bless the meditations of his heart? May they be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And all those who agree with the prayer and believe God will do it, let me hear you shout amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, give God praise where you are. Welcome Daryl, Pastor Daryl Mitchell, as he closes us out. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feast. Stand to your feast. Let's bless the Lord for his goodness today. We just experienced a mighty outpouring of the Spirit today. As a man of God was obedient to God, he was obedient to the Holy Spirit to move. I want to say to Antioch today, you're never going to be the same after today. Amen. The people that were filled with the Holy Ghost today, their life would never be the same. And I thank God for the man of God. I don't have time to say all I would like to say. That will come in another time. But his grandfather and grandmother were my godparents. His sister. I mean, his, his, his auntie, Joanne. Regina, my god sister. His dad, my god brother. Angela, my god cousin. God, I just thank God for them. And I thank God for you for, for, you. for being here for this man of God. For blessing him. Amen. And today, this ministry gone, have gone to another level. We experienced the mighty move of the Holy Ghost today. We experienced a mighty move from the word of the man of God being obedient to releasing that. He told you where he came from and where he's at now. And God going to continue to elevate him. And I really appreciate and thank him. Hallelujah. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We praise you. Lord, we thank you for the move of the Spirit today. We thank you for your word that went forth today. Lord, I, we thank you for the people who were filled with the precious Holy Ghost. Lord, their life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, that you continue to fill them, continue to bless them, continue to reveal your spirit to them, oh God. Reveal your word to them. Bless their life today. Carry them to another level of your glory. Lord, I ask you to carry this man of God here to another level of the glory of you, be another level of your anointing. I ask that you look down from your holy home in heaven, releasing your glory, your anointing upon this church, upon this ministry, oh God. And we, I just thank you, oh God, for this day and this time. I thank you, oh God, for the faithfulness of the peoples of this ministry. The Lord, I ask that you continue to show yourself strong on their behalf. Continue to look down from your holy home in heaven, releasing your glory and your anointing. And we thank you, O oh God, for your goodness and mercy. You say, shall follow us all the days of our life. In the name of Jesus, as we leave here today, go our separate way to ask, O oh God, that you lead and guide us and direct us, O oh God, according to Psalms 23. Lord, I ask, O oh God, that you, you continue to release your, your divine protection upon our life according to Psalms 91. And God, I ask that you continue to bless us according to Psalm 103. And let the blessings of Abraham be upon our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. You have a wonderful, blessed day. And thank you, God. Hallelujah.
Hello. I got it, I got it. So, for my volunteers who need a, a wristband, please see Miss Clara in the cafe. But you guys are dismissed. Thank you guys so much for coming.